Hey everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna be exploring slots, but it's still gonna be a little bit more about validation as a topic of what we're doing, but slots is something we're gonna use to help us accomplish creating a generic component that we can reuse. So, in previous talk, we bound our the validity of our form to our main component. What about if we can create a generic form component to which we can bound that state of validity? All right, let's go ahead and just do just that. Let's create a form dot view, all right? Scaffold. And let's grab this mounted. I'll comment this out. Let's put it in here. Let's grab the error list and form validation. Comment it out from here. Computed. Bopped. Cool. And let's move this. Uh, errors. Do we need to? No, I'd say just comment it out for now. And let's clean up. Form validation and errors here, and I will just comment this out as well. Okay, so make sure it works for now. Cool. All right, so just making sure we're not forgetting anything. Cool. So we have this form. <clears throat> uh, right. So what we want to do is take all these children and uh, pass them to this form. Okay. So let's create a div container, basically where we're or where we're going to be storing all of these, and let's just type in slot, like so. All right. Now what we can do is, uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to put a p here, and I'm going to display form valid. Form valid, like so. Now let's bring in our form component. Uh, forget to register it. And let's render it. And now let's wrap everything in this form. Cool. All right, let's refresh. Okay, so we actually need this errors thing. So let's go grab these this errors. Let's create data. Oh. Let's return errors. Let's uncomment this. Just make sure it compiles. Cool. So form valid. And if we fill out our form correctly, form is valid. Cool. Uh, now let's go ahead and try to grab this validity state from our, for our from our form component and make sure we have access to it in our app view. All right. So at this point, I'm confident that my component works. So I'm going to remove everything I uncommented here. Um, I'm going to remove these two. I'm going to keep the button because this is something I want to use later. And I'm going to create a form valid. I'm going to just give it false to start with. And what I want to do is I just want to be model. That was gamble. V model form valid. And as with all the other V models, we want to accept props. And here we're going to have value required true. So we want to make sure that if we're using a form, we're not just putting it there for a laugh, you know, we're using it for its intended purpose, which is to validate some input fields, okay, and to use that reactivity in some sort of, you know, some sort of function. So required and <clears throat> type is boolean, right? So form is either valid or not. And what we want to do is we want to watch for form valid and we want to make immediate true and handler we want to say that uh, 
Actually, let's pass in a new value, so every time... Um, build new value. Any time form valid gets updated, we want to do something, right? So, and we're watching it, so let's go ahead and emit. Let's make sure we call it on this. We want to basically em emit input. So it's going to get bound to our form valid value here. And let's emit this new value. All right. So let's refresh. Let's remove this uh, form valid here since we no longer need it. Because now we can do the form valid here. So let's bring back our button, actually. And let's say span please fill out the form all right v else so if it's uh, not valid let's display a message so there we go so uh we're correctly basically at this point we're correctly making the form uh update our property here so now our main component becomes more about the data and the form that is um, that we're trying to manipulate rather than the visible components right so these individual components take care of what is being displayed and how that displayed information is being manipulated and our main component is all about the data okay so let's carry on let's uh, see what else we can do with slots so what I want to do is I want to create a class error summary, right? Well, we have these list of errors, error messages. I mean, we are displaying them here, but I want to go the extra, you know, the extra step and show you what's possible. Uh, so stylus, language stylus and scope. I'll take error summary and I'm going to say border I want the X solid red and um, uh, let's do border radius five pixels there we go okay so in here I want to do P not not P I'll just do div and I'll say V4 error in error list and let's just display this error here okay and let's not forget to bind this key which is going to be error error oh <clears throat> okay so there we go and if we fill this out our error summary will disappear let's make it just a bit prettier so Adding 0.75 rem. Oh, Jesus. Okay, there we go. And uh, let's just say uh, the if summary, and let's say summary. Let's copy this, these rows, put them here. Required is false. So only when we do <clears throat> specify that we want the summary, right? That's when it's gonna get rendered. Okay, so we have the summary. Uh, it's the default summary. And uh, let's go ahead and make sure we State that just for example. This is not required. This is just something to just something to say. This is the default summary, right? Uh, just an example. Now let's say I'm gonna go and turn this into a framework, sell it for a thousand bucks, and you know I want it to be extensible. I want people to be able to reuse these components any way they want. So I want them to provide their own default summary, right? Let's go ahead and specify another slot that that and let's put this in the slot okay let's give the slot a name 
and let's name it summary. Okay, let's type in template. And we can use this template to uh, bind something to the slot. So let's go with something simple for now. Let's do h3 and let's say custom summary. All right, so there it is for now. Now what we can do is we can do v slot. And uh, what's the name? The name is summary. And that's what we're going to bind it to, right? So when we provide this component, we can bind it. <clears throat> not bind, sorry, we can override the default summary if, of course, we're providing the option for it. Okay, but as you can see, the error list is only present within this child component, and we don't really have access to it here. So, what will be the. How, how do you extract this list, right? So, what you can do is you can bind any data. To this slot and access that data uh, from within the binding of the slot in the template here. So um, let's go. Uh, let me show you how this works. So you can do vbind error list and let's do error list, right? So we're binding a variable error list and we're binding error list to that error list. Okay, a lot of error lists, but let's go ahead, give equals here and let's extract this error list from this binding okay so now what we can do is we can make a div and instead of that let's use a listing so v4 error in error list and again i'll just use the same key that i did before and i'm going to display this error And there we go. So if we type in, we get our custom summary and we can pass in some custom errors through this template. Okay. So a little bit more on this. Let's actually rename this to errors. And here we can then bind errors. Okay. So just, just so you know which property exactly is getting uh, extracted here. So it's the one that you bind, not the data that you bind to. So this is the property. And this is what we bind. Okay. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode, guys. If you're enjoying the series, leave a like, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. And see you in the next episode.